What's up guys, we're back here in DaVinci Resolve and today I'm gonna to try and give you a tutorial on how to create a halation effect in the free version of DaVinci Resolve. If you're not familiar with what halation is, it's a characteristic of film where the bright areas of your footage have a reddish glow or halo effect around the edges that spills into the darker surrounding areas of the footage. So people will use halation if they're trying to add a softness to their footage and people who are trying to do film emulation will most likely be adding a halation effect to create that film emulation. So instead of trying to explain it more with words, I'll just show you what halation looks like with some footage that I have queued up here. So this is some footage of Pluto and Donald with the halation effect that I have turned on. And this is what it looks like when the halation is turned off. Halation on, halation off. So with the halation on, you should notice kind of a reddish glow around the highlighted areas of the footage. And so that's what we're talking about today. So what I'm actually gonna do is I have some other clips queued up and I'm just gonna let some footage roll. And if the footage that I'm showing you is something that you're trying to create yourself, then stick around and I'll show you how to add this effect in DaVinci Resolve so that you can apply it to your own footage. All right, if you guys are still here, it probably means that the footage you just saw is something that you'd like to recreate for yourself. So I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. So the first thing I'm gonna do in Resolve is turn off all of the grain and color grading that I had applied to my footage so that I can show you how I built the footage from the ground up. So I'm gonna turn off the grain and then head over to the color page and disable all of the nodes that I created for this clip right here. So speaking of this clip, I shot this with my DJI Action 4 in D-Log M. So the first thing that I did to this D-Log M footage was I applied a Rec. 709 conversion LUT at the very end of my node tree. So you can see this here, I've labeled it LUT, and this is my Rec. 709 conversion. I think I just grabbed the LUT off the DJI website. And then the next thing that I did to my footage was I applied a white balance node on the far left over here. And the only thing that I did with the white balance node was warm up the footage a little bit. Then I applied an exposure node, then a contrast node, then a saturation node. And I'll just quickly point out that with the saturation node, I did modify the color of the sky a little bit from a purplish blue to more of a cyan looking blue. And then next I have my halation node right here. So that's what's applying this glow that you're seeing around the highlighted areas of the footage. So this is halation off, and then this is halation on. So what we're gonna do here is turn off this halation node, and I'm gonna show you guys how to build the halation compound node yourself. We're gonna click on our node here and create two serial nodes right after it. And then we're gonna select our two serial nodes, right click, and then go to create compound node. And then we're gonna delete our leftover serial node right here and just work with our new compound node. I'm gonna give my node a label and I'm gonna call this halation. And then I'm gonna double click into my compound node. So this is what it looks like. It's got one node in it right now. And what we wanna do is add three more serial nodes to our compound node. So the first thing we're gonna do is label our first and our last node in here. And the first node is going to be labeled CST in, and the last node is going to be labeled CST out. So if you're not familiar with what CST means, CST I refer to as color space transform. So this is our color space transform in and color space transform out. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to go up to our effects in the top right corner, open that up, click on the magnifying glass and search for color space transform. And then we're gonna drag and drop our color space transform onto the first node and also onto the last node. All right, so let's just work with the first node. So for the color space transform in, we're gonna set the input gamma to rec 709. And then we're gonna set the output gamma to linear. 
So you're already gonna notice on the left side here, this is darkening our footage and that's okay. That's, that's what we want here. For our CST out node, we're gonna do the opposite. We're gonna set the input gamma to linear and then we're gonna set the output gamma to rec 709. So basically our footage is back to normal here because uh, whatever we did with our CST in node, we did the opposite with our CST out node. So nothing has changed at this point. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna separate these nodes a little bit so I have some more room to work with. And then I'm gonna take away some of these connections here. So I'm gonna remo remove the connection from the third node to the CST out, drag this down here. And then I'm gonna remove the connection from the second node to the third node. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag a connection from the CST in node to node number three right here. And then I'm gonna right click in this empty space, go to add node, and we're gonna pick layer mixer right here. We're gonna right click on the layer mixer, go down to composite mode and change it from normal to add. We're gonna drag a connection from the layer mixer to the CST out node. And then we're gonna connect node number two and node number three to these two connection points of the layer mixer. So connecting node number two to the mixer and then connecting, connecting node number three to the mixer. So right away, the footage has gotten a lot brighter and that's because our layer mixer is adding the information from these two nodes together. So if I disable one of the nodes, our footage goes back to normal, but then now when I enable it, I'm basically doubling the amount of color information that's going into the layer mixer node. And that's why our footage is getting brighter. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna leave, leave node number two alone and just work with node number three down here. So the first thing we're gonna do in node number three is go down to the bottom here and click on the blur tab. And what we're gonna be playing around with here is the radius information. So before I go into any specifics, I'm just gonna drag up the sliders and then drop them so that you can see what effect this has on our footage right here. So you can see it when I drag the sliders up, kind of creates a glowy effect in our footage, but it's not, you know, uh, any specific color glow. And right now it's not narrowed down to any specific parts of the footage. Everything is just glowing at the moment. So we're gonna reset the radius here, click on this link icon, and that's gonna allow me to move these colors independent of each other. So before the link icon was clicked and I was able to drag everything up and down at the same time, but I actually wanna control them one at a time. So we're gonna reset this, unlink them, and then I'm gonna give you some specific values here to set for your red, your green, and your blue, but definitely play around with these settings to see what kind of halation color you wanna create. Um, typically, I think halation is more of a reddish, orangey glow or halo effect, but if you want to create more of a golden effect, you can tweak these colors to suit your taste. But for now, I'm just gonna give you some specific values that you can use as a baseline when you're trying this out. So for the red radius, we're gonna use a value of 0.85. For the green, we're gonna use a value of 0.6. And for the blue, we're gonna use a value of 0.4. And so this is the look that we're getting right now. The next thing we're gonna do in node number three is go over to the curves tab right here. And the first thing we're gonna do is drag our far right anchor point all the way down, essentially nullifying any blur that we had just created in that previous tab. So the next thing I wanna do is add an anchor point somewhere along this line, and I'm gonna add it in the lower third section of the curves. So we'll start with something right there. And then we're gonna take the far right anchor point and drag it up. And I'm gonna go pretty extreme with the far right anchor point just so you can see how the footage gets affected. So I'm gonna drag it all the way up and then start dragging it left. And pay attention to the footage to see what it's looking like right now. So we don't really want an extreme glow effect like what you're seeing at the moment. So usually what I recommend is just having your far right anchor point somewhere in the lower third, maybe in the, the, the lower half of your curves area. And then um, zooming in on your footage and toggling on and off the third node to see if that's the kind of effect that you're going for. 
So I think that looks okay to me for this footage right now. Um, so what's happening here in the curves is it's basically saying don't apply the blur effect to the darkest portions of my footage. Only apply it to this area of my footage that's captured underneath this slope right here. All right, so that's basically how you set up your halation compound node in the free version of DaVinci Resolve. To back out of the compound node, what I do is I just double click on this label down here at the bottom of the node tree. And then I'm back here in my regular node section. Um, I noticed I forgot to label this compound node, so I'm gonna call it halation. And then we're gonna have a look at this footage and see how it looks. Okay, so just for comparison, here is our before footage as D log M. And then here is our footage with all of the color grading and halation applied. So that's just my quick tutorial of how to create a halation effect in the free version of DaVinci Resolve. Hopefully you guys took something away from that and can apply it to your own footage. But for now, that's gonna do it for me. We'll see you guys in the next one.